We got the AC not working. Yeah, um, it, it went all the way up to like 90. Shoot, it's about there now. Yeah, like. I had it. It's been off for like two days. When my husband looked me here. He said it was kind of wet, and I don't know if it was. I don't know. Cause like my brother do HVAC, but my brother-in-law, he said it was going. It was going. It was doing it like running outside, but it wasn't running inside. Ah, that's not good at all. Did anybody? Did y'all cut off any breakers or anything? Hmm? Did y'all cut off any breakers? I think he did. Okay. The breakers is in there though. Alright. Right behind that door. So we got everything seems to be on. Alright. Let's see if that disconnect is off. Don't hear nothing. So before I kick the condenser on, let me go back and cut this off now and at least figure out why the fan motor isn't running. Let's get the bag open with the meter. As soon as I took the blow, the door off, I heard it. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick up in here. ECM motor is just not responding correctly. I mean, I could probably just, you know, take the module off and see what's all going on, but pretty much that module's dead. And I don't think Ferguson's gonna give me a whole new module. I have to buy the motor, the whole motor with a new module. This one was pretty easy. That's just one of those things where, I mean, that from all the ECMs I've diagnosed, if you come across one that's like rocking back and forth like that, it's something within the module. Your system's obviously giving the, the motor is obviously getting low voltage and high voltage because it's it's running. It's just not running correct. Um, I could be wrong, but I just have it's just been easy for me to just come up to those kind of systems and be like, oh, my motor's rocking back and forth. I need a new one, um, and I'll put, slap a new one in there and it'll be fine. I, I do think it is it is more of an, an actual module issue than the motor itself, but I've come across a lot of these. Uh, supply houses nowadays saying like you know they're not you can't get the the modules by themselves like you you got to get them with the new motors <laughs> or at least they'll carry the motors and i'd have to bit i'd have to order the module um something like that so <sighs> with that being said i'm gonna go on to the next service call and see if i can record that one for you guys as well let's go the next call. It's a dirty filter down there. Let me see here. It's cold but it's not sweating. So, uh, Two-ton coal. Who did this splicing right here with the wire nuts? Got a little P-trap here for the drain. Not bad. Let's see what the thermostat's saying. Sorry. That's my bad. That's my bad. Let's set to 75, read 85. Why is that in the on position? Let me get my probes up in here and outside. I don't think anything's wrong indoors. All right, it, it was running, but it just shut off after I got my clamps on there. Um, it's 
pretty difficult to get the low side and the high side on. I freaking hate these cages and they never have they've never given us a master key for the locks. So for all of their all of this property management's properties with these cages, it's just I normally have to like cut that out the way. Um, or or like grind or saw that lock off so I could then remove this whole top. But I will say when I immediately hooked up the gauges and I looked at the app before it cut off, um, and it was before I put my clamps on there, it had a 94 PSI on the suction and like a 320 on the head. And this is a R22 unit. If I can get that, there we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. My best slightly important phone call I had to take. It is worth noting that the uh, the liquid line coming from the house is quarter. Going into the unit is three eighths. And I think three quarter down there for the suction. No, that's pinched off. That's pinched off down there. I can see the little little pinch right there. So that's probably, what is that next size? Like five eighths instead of three quarter. Um, I wonder if it went out on the float switch. Let me go look at that real quick. I mean, just looking at the suction pressure was really, really high, but I don't, I don't think it would have went off on high pressure. I think the drain cut it off. Yeah, the whole thing in here isn't running. So I wonder. Something just kicked back on. Lay this right here. Yeah, there's some definitely some water in there. So I'll probably end, I'll probably have to clean this out or blow this out. Um, I want to I want to let that system run and see what kind of pressures I'm getting first before I go ahead and clean that out. So I think as to why the system is running, the suction pressure that it is, um, is due most likely to the return area not being sealed. So like I tried to catch it on video, but the return platform is not sealed to just that area. You know, it's not, it's not covering everything and blocking just the return from pulling where the filter is. Um, it's pulling from the wall chase going up into the attic. Like I put my hand up there and I think you can catch, I'll probably put the picture up there too, but you can see like the dust and stuff that's collected on the walls. That's from the return, like pulling it um, from up in the attic. And I can feel the difference in the heat from in that wall cavity to the air that's right there in the, uh, in the return. You know, that air at the return is probably, is, it feels like it's in the eighties, even though the thermostats are in 85. Um, whereas like the, the air inside the walls though, you know, I could probably catch it on my thermal imager. Let me try that. Um, but, uh, the walls themselves are significantly hotter and I can just feel that kind of air. And let's see here. Denser's pushing out about a one nine, one ten. Come ahead. Holding in, uh, 96, is that 95? That's 96. Um, is that like a 15 degree, 14 degree split? I, I'd say the coil is fine. Um, I know the sub coil is pretty high, but uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely, definitely about to pull out the thermal imager and see if I can document that uh, the temperature difference of the walls right there inside the inside the closet because it's. It's definitely affecting the, uh, the return air, for sure. All right, I've kind of, I think, I think I was in the right place, but that's not the, that's not the complete issue. Um, I don't know what really, aside from the obvious overcharge on the system, I don't know what else could be, could be stopping. I mean, it's, it's overcharged, but it's cooling. 
So maybe me removing a little bit will help. Um, but I'm, I'm almost inclined to not do anything only because the system is already undersized for the home. Um, so I feel like if I start removing some, it's going to not perform well under low load conditions. Maybe fine right now, but when it starts getting cooler outside, I don't think it'll work. Um, so I guess let me go attack this drain issue. Um, I'll walk around the property real quick and see if I can find any issue, uh, or not any issue, any outlet for the drain to see if it'll, uh, if I can see where it's going to blow out at. Since the thermal imager couldn't pick it up, I had an idea of just sticking the field piece probe in the little wall cavity. And it wasn't increasing a lot because, I mean, it, it's got attic heat that's just falling through the stud wall. Um, or just carrying it down, you know, radiant, whatever, the, however you want to put it. Um, the temperature was increasing slowly. Uh, the dry bulb was, and the humidity kind of was. But if I, le if I left the probe inside the wall cavity, it was reading warmer than what the thermostat was reading. Um, I pulled it out, and I put the return, the, the cyclometer? hygrometer whatever the probe is itself i put it on the return grill and then the dry bulb temperature shot down um and the humidity it started reading the humidity you know coming over the return grill and that's been slowly dropping i think truthfully the real issue here was the drain was stopping the whole system from working completely because they weren't saying they weren't cooling they were saying it was just really a uh, like they had no ac at all um and if the system was cutting on, cutting off, cutting on, cutting off because the drain was backed up and then, you know, naturally fixing itself for a little bit, um, that would make sense. Um, I'm going to notate everything that I have here today um, and especially about how this is not the correct size for this home. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mess with the charge at all. I, I understand that it is it is overcharged. Um, I just think there's other things that are necessarily affecting this that is making it run fairly warmer and fairly hotter. You know, I, I could end up, I could probably clean the condenser coil and, and affect that greatly. Um, but for the most part, the real issue here was the uh, was the drain line backing up and causing the float switch to trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything up off the unit. Um, I just used a little brush. The, the brush that comes with the easy traps, I just kind of brushed and pushed that gunk out and poured a water bottle down it and it, it cleared right up. The trap was the issue, not the rest of the line. Um, so with that being said, guys, let me go ahead and clean up and I will see you guys back at the truck. I just noticed too that the evaporator coil had a piston um, instead of a TXV. So my superheat still shows that I'm overcharged but I mean it's doing it's overcharged enough to where right now it's it's maintaining at least like a 15 degree delta T um, and if I'm if I'm basing it off the return air temperature like inside the dang return space under the platform it's it's doing even better um, so I'm, I'm I even called my boss about it just to explain everything to him. Like, hey, like I feel like I'm in the right place. You know, is there anything extra that you want me to do? Because I think this unit's good. And just gave him the rundown on everything. He's like, nah, man, it's you're, you did everything fine. They'll take everything in the invoice. They're cooling. Um, what would you guys have done differently? Would you have tried to, you know, try to play with the charge a little bit? Um, or would you guys have just looked at the Delta T and realized it's 100 degrees outside right now and the unit's probably doing all it can and that there's other factors contributing to it? Um, I don't know. That's this just, this just where my brain, my process thought, my process was on it. Um, today has been a hectic day from tenants not like answering the phone, um, even though we scheduled things with them. They weren't coming to the door, and then I'd have to go back later. So it was, it was just a whole, whole lot of, whole lot of hoopla today. But glad I was.
was able to get some people cooling and make a video for you guys. So I'm ready to be over with summer. I'm ready for the winter to be here and for things to just not be balls to the wall. Um, with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.